Dr. Anegan discussing Dr. Epstein's article. Um, Dr. Epstein does a great job in the first paragraph of this article, really summarizing some of the things that I had in my original article in 2009. Um, certainly, we want to talk about facial thirds when it comes to a hairline lowering. As you know, the distance from the chin to underneath the nose should be the same distance as it is uh, from the nose to the brow and then from the brow to the hairline. We've discussed this in great detail. And again, Dr. Epstein does a great job of discussing that. Also, sort of in the beginning of the article, Dr. Epstein sort of uses uh, the exact terminology that was used in my original article about how a high forehead really can uh, masculinate the, the face. Um, many women who have a very high forehead want to have a more feminine look. Uh, they look at themselves and don't really realize um, why, but they of course just don't like their high forehead and that's why they call or look this procedure up on the internet in the first place. Um, or, or of course, as it becomes more popular, most facial plastic surgeons, plastic surgeons, dermatologists, most doctors know about this procedure at this point. Um, so a hairline lowering certainly makes sense in regards to even facial thirds, but also just to take away the masculinity of, of a face. Think about uh, you know, the extreme where a transgender patient may undergo a hairline lowering to give equal facial thirds to feminize their face. Well, just a, a non-transgender patient can also undergo a hairline lowering to feminize the face. And this makes sense, and it, again, comes back to facial thirds, which, uh, again, Dr. Epstein basically is uh, popularizing through um, this new article uh, in summary of my article.